I hope that you've installed the desktop application because we are working there. It is very similar to the browser version, but it's just more reliable and more convenient. In our brand new account, we already have some Figma files. They are pre-created, so it's easier for us to start and just explore the opportunities that Figma has. Let's explore what we have here. At the top, we have Figma gem files. FigGem is a tool for ideation process and for research analysis. It's like a whiteboard with the collaboration properties. It's very nice from Figma to pre-create for us the templates for the team collaboration like brainstorming session or research analysis. And then we have pre-created design files. What we have here? Figma Basics. It's the file where Figma explains its basic functionality. Prototyping in Figma, it's a simple interactive prototype that is made for you to explore some prototyping functionalities. And wireframing. Wireframing is exactly what we are going to create soon, so take a look at this file. It has some standard wireframing blocks, so you can find it useful. And the team library, it is a design system for team projects. It is located not in drafts, like every other pre-created file, but as you might guess, in the team project. Let's first understand where we are. We are in the Recents tab. It is a tab where you can find all the files that you have recently opened or modified. But the files are actually kept in other places, like in drafts, for example. You see, there are less files, because the team library is not kept in drafts. While you are studying and you want to remain on free Figma plan, you can keep all your files in drafts. Until you have complex projects with several files or until you need someone to collaborate with, it might be enough. Team projects allow only three files in free plan. So if you keep the files there, you need to create a new team each time. Next, community tab. It leads to another interface. It's easy to get lost there. I will show you how to return back in the moment. In community, you can find many useful Figma files that other people open sourced. You can easily copy it and start using. There are a lot of interesting stuff there. For example, Google have published its material design kit. So everything that is specified in the kit are just there in Figma and you can use it. Figma also has created some educational resources there. And other users are sharing many useful stuff icons, illustrations, UX maps, a lot of awesome content. I suggest you to explore it. Good, but how do we return back from the community? We are in a completely different place without previous navigation. On the left upper corner, there is a globe icon. If you click on it, you'll find your account. I have three already, one main one and two others I have created while recording the video for you. And community, we are here right now, and we need to return back to our account. We press on the account and we are back. Next, we have a team project that Figma have pre-created for us. And we can also create a new team project. Let's explore what we have here. Teams are very powerful in a paid plan, and I will show you later what it suggests. But in the free plan, team projects are very limited. On free plan, you can create only one sub-project inside a team, this one. So you cannot create more sub-projects there. And in the sub-project, you can create only three files. How teams can be useful? First, you can keep your design system separately, that other files in the team can inherit. Figma has already pre-created a design system for us, that is called Team Library. But it's not really useful. I would suggest to open it, explore, and then delete. It's not a good one, but as long as other file would inherit it, you can easily be confused. For example, you have green and red color in the design system. When you create a new file, it can inherit the system and it will know that we have green and red colors. It's useful for the product work when you have multiple files that share the same design system. But for small projects like landing page that we are going to create, it's not really useful. It's more convenient to keep the design system in the same file, especially because we are going to keep the file in the drafts as we are on the free plan. 
Now I'm going to show you how Figma looks like on a paid plan, so you know what you will get if you pay for it. Figma charges for every team. So every team that you have with its subprojects is a paid team. The more teams you have, the more you have to pay. Team is super useful for product work. So if you have a big digital product with a lot of different files, keep them in one team. Other people that you invite to the team can see the whole team project or even edit it if you set such permissions. So everyone will have an organized view of the project. When there are a lot of files, it's easy to create a mess in the drafts, so it makes sense to keep them in a team. Teams also give your design system a superpower. As you can see, I have a sub-project where I keep several files with different parts of the design system. For example, I have separate desktop and mobile design system. When I create a new file, I can tell Figma which design system I want to inherit. For example, in this file I am inheriting the desktop design system. It tells me that I have the updates in the design system right away. And I can check what have changed and update my file accordingly. Actually, I've made these changes myself, but if you are working in a team, this can be very valuable. When you click update, all the components from the design system will be automatically updated according to the changes. Take a look at the file organization. Here in this file I have the layout dedicated only to one feature or topic. Task feature in this case. And in this file I have several pages that are related to the feature. Task list, task drawer, complete task, share task. And every page has some specifications, titles, subtitles and the description. Sometimes I need to describe the behavior, sometimes I need to insert a link or describe the permissions. Everything I specify here, so developers can find it for sure. It helps to avoid the situation when the developers have done something and it turned out not something that you imagined. Because the specification was somewhere in different place and the developers forgot it or didn't even know it existed. The simpler it is for developers, the more chances that there are that you get what you have designed. Here is how the team project can be organized for one product. So this team is dedicated to one product. And if I have another product, I create a separate team for that. But if you are freelancing, it makes sense to create only one team and for every project create a sub-project. Why? Because every team is paid separately, but in one team you can create a lot of sub-projects. So you can invite your clients to the separate files and not to the whole team. If you are freelancing, I suggest you to create only one paid team and keep your files organized by projects or by clients. Let's return to our new account and create our first design file.